Hello. First of all, I want to thank you all for having me. I'm very excited and humbled to be part of such a wonderful event. Currently, I'm in a room surrounded by jars of preserved reptiles and amphibians. About 195,000 estimate. This is where I work. I manage the reptile and amphibian collection at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. Now, although I do work with dead reptiles, I keep some live ones at home as pets. Similar how people take out their dogs for a walk, I sometimes take out one of my snakes. She's a Mexican black keen snake named Ivy. And I can usually take her on my shoulders when I'm running errands. You could only imagine the looks I get from people. Well, one day, I decided to go to the mall with my snake. You know, like most people do. And I visited a vintage boutique where one of my friends worked. She knew I was coming with an unusual guest. Once I arrived, her co-worker fled behind the counter immediately out of fear. Now, with permission from the store manager, who actually seemed curious about Ivy, I put Ivy on one of the storefront mannequins. Ivy looked like an accessory on this black, sleek, vintage-inspired dress and actually looked quite stunning. People that passed by began to notice and taking pictures and posting it on social media. Ivy's so calm, she just simply stayed on the mannequin, flickering her tongue, getting acquainted with her new surroundings. The sales associate that originally was afraid of Ivy came out and began to be curious, especially noticing how calm Ivy was in such an out-of-place situation. I asked her if she wanted to pet her, and even better yet, she actually held her. In just 30 minutes, her whole view of snakes completely changed, to the point that she actually said Ivy is very beautiful, and all it took was some exposure. The initial reaction from the sales associate when seeing Ivy was no surprise. Reptiles are often depicted as villains in films. Many people assume many of them are venomous and that they are inherently aggressive. We were taught that these animals are scary. When people say they usually love animals, they often refer to the furry and feathered species. Similar to insects and spiders, reptiles are often feared and misunderstood. Even growing up in Latin culture as a young boy, when I'd be playing outside, looking at the lizards, my aunts would tell me, Mijo, no toques esa lagartija, es peligroso. <laughs> Which translates to, don't touch that lizard, it's dangerous. Regardless of what I was told by my aunts, reptiles caught my interest. I was intrigued by them. And it all started by watching old monster movies like Godzilla and a giant kaiju turtle named Gamera. Godzilla became my icon. These characters helped me be exposed to reptiles and even sympathize with them. My fascination grew to the point where I started to read and learn more about reptiles. This helped me gain a better appreciation for them. There was no room for fear, although that's often not the case for many other people. So let me pose a question to think about for a moment. For those of you that fear, or dare I say even hate reptiles, can you remember the first time you were taught to have a negative connotation or reaction to these animals? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is venom. I was walking through an arboretum a few years back where I saw a family and the mother was yelling at her child to stay away from a lizard running across a path. In fact, she was trying to hit it with a small palm branch and yelling that the lizard was venomous. Similar to my aunts, they were lumping all reptiles as being venomous. The fact of the matter is that most reptiles are non-venomous. There are very few lizard species that are venomous and within snakes there are over 3,000 species of snakes. Out of those 3,000, 600 of those are venomous, and out of those 600, only 200 are actually considered lethal. That accounts for only 7% of snakes. We can also start changing how we view venom. Venom is used primarily for the digestion of, and capture of prey. Snakes, for example, lack the claws and crushing teeth other predators have. Without venom, some snakes might have a difficult time capturing and killing prey. Take this king cobra, for example. This snake specializes in eating other snakes, even other venomous snakes. Having venom is essential to kill and eat its specialized prey quickly to prevent it from being harmed itself. Venom has also proven useful in the medical field. The same toxins that affect the nervous system can make great painkillers, and those toxins that prevent Blood clotting can help in the treatment of heart disease. Secondly, 
we can start looking at how we name reptiles and find out a little bit more what's behind the name. We ourselves are guilty of giving descriptive, menacing, common names to some reptiles. For example, there's the Death Adder, the Gila Monster, and this little guy, the Thorny Devil Lizard. As you can see, it has these thorny spikes all around its body that helps it to protect itself from predators. It also has this false head that confuses a predator. Its scales have these small grooves that allow water to collect on its body. This water is passively transported to its mouth using capillary action, an important adaptation for living in the hot Australian desert. In addition, its diet consists primarily of ants. As you can see, the thorny devil lizard isn't so devilish after all. Thirdly, we can associate reptiles with the imagination they inspire. Going back to my childhood hero, Godzilla, this massive fire-breathing lizard-like monster that has captured the fascination of both kids and adults alike for many generations. Reptiles with a diverse morphology continue to spark the interests of filmmakers and artists alike particularly larger-than-life, fun, thrilling monster flicks. In 2012, a CGI company came into the collection to take photographs of specimens for use in reference for a movie. At first, they didn't tell me what they were working on other than it would be some kind of creature feature. I just assumed it'd be a low-budget B-movie, which I still thought would be pretty cool. As they pulled out their lights and cameras, they pulled me aside and in a very secretive way asked me if I wanted to know what they were working on. They told me they were working on two films, Godzilla 2014 and Pacific Rim. I was thrilled when I heard that. I was ecstatic. For Pacific Rim, they specifically were looking for a common snapping turtle, like this one here. They wanted to photograph its shell and beak-like mouth. They were also interested in photographing its rough-looking textured skin. All these elements were most likely the inspiration for this lovely fellow here. This is one of the monsters that appeared in the film. In fact, they even mentioned Guillermo del Toro himself was supposed to visit to look at the specimens himself. Seriously, if that would have happened, I think I just would have just died. For Godzilla 2014, I pulled up this sun gazer lizard. Native to the southern grasslands of Africa, its dragon-like appearance and spiky jagged scales attracted the filmmakers for using skin reference for Godzilla. It was a complete dream for me pulling out specimens for use in skin reference for Godzilla, the very first monster that ignited my fascination with reptiles from the very beginning. I mentioned just a few ways of how we can change our view of reptiles for the better by looking past the tropes and looking at all their, their features, both scientifically and in pop culture. So now I challenge you to change your perspective on reptiles. Next time you're on a hike and see a snake, or even under your backyard and you see a lizard, look at them with a new lens. Take a photo from a distance, respecting their space. Post it on social media and change the dialogue from fear to wonder. See if you can find out more information on the lizard or snake you just saw. There are websites you can upload your photo and experts can ID them for you. Don't let fear inhibit you from learning more about these fascinating animals we call reptiles. Thank you very much for listening.